Over the past week, we've seen quite a large number of MLS products make their way over to Europe. I mean, the biggest one out there was Ricardo Pepe, who at just 18 years old became a record transfer of Augsburg, a club in the German Bundesliga. He's a player who started in FC Dallas's affiliate team, North Texas SC, at 15 years old. And now he's headed over to Germany with a price tag just around $20 million. Hold on, wait, just wait a second. Are we really at the point where I'm just talking about an 18-year-old American MLS product selling for $20 million and it's just nonchalant? This league's really changed. But as impressive as that move is, this video was actually sparked when I saw that Daryl DK finalized his move over to West Brom for an estimated $9 million. The reason this move's so interesting to me is because, unlike Pepe, Daryl DK was a product of the 2020 MLS Super Draft. DK went through playing college with no MLS Academy and entered into the annual draft where he was selected in the fifth round at almost 20 years old. That's $9 million and a big sale over to Europe from a player that Orlando City just took a shot on in the draft. Now, obviously, they gave him his opportunity and helped his gameplay, but really, they didn't develop DK. They didn't make him into the player he is. They just picked up a free guy and sold him on for an insane profit. That's what you can do if you pick right in these MLS Super Drafts. So after I saw this news, I just had a look at who was picked over DK, what teams picked, what players, and how are those players doing compared to DK's massive move? Are they selling for multiple millions of dollars to Europe? Well, the answer to that is no, but have they at least made a name for themselves yet in the league? And because the Super Draft is actually tomorrow, why don't we take a look at some of the best and worst drafts from the past few years? Now, to be brutally honest, when I was scrolling through these past drafts, there were a lot of names I couldn't recognize. And it's actually really sad. A lot of players who just didn't meet expectations. A few appearances here, a couple loan moves there, and then just gone. That's how it is with the Super Draft. Sometimes you get lucky and find an MLS Best 11 player, and sometimes you get a striker who never actually scores for your club. But anyways, let's look at who was drafted over DK in the 2020 draft. Now, keep in mind these players only started playing in 2020, so I'm aware it's going to be rare that they've already made a name for themselves. But either way, let's see who we got here. With the first pick of the 2020 MLS Super Draft, Inter Miami selected Robbie Robinson from Clemson University. Robinson is a winger who is currently valued at $600,000 according to Transfer Market, and I'll be using them for all of my player values in this video. In MLS, he's got two seasons under his belt, where in 2020 he made 12 appearances, and in 2021 he doubled his games. Now, Robinson is in well as struggling inter Miami side, but he's picked up four goals in his 1300 minutes last year. I mean, it's pretty average, nothing spectacular, but starting off with a strong base and he still has a lot of potential. Moving on with his second pick, Nashville selected Jack Mayer. Mayer started off his professional career with some short loan moves to USL sides, but he's now started to break into the Nashville first team. He's been partnered to side back-to-back -back Defender of the Year Walker Zimmerman, so he's got a strong role model, and with Nashville being a strong defensive team, he's been able to up his level of play. I was surprised to see he's valued just over $1 million, and he seems to be on the right path. The third pick, it went back to Inter Miami, who this time picked defender Dylan Nealis. Nealis got some playing time in his first season in Miami, but he was then traded in Nashville where he only saw four games. Following the 2021 season, Nealis has been traded over to the New York Red Bulls in exchange for $175,000 in general allocation money. With the fourth pick, the Vancouver Whitecaps landed on Ryan Raposo, a midfielder from Syracuse. In his two seasons, Raposo played a fair amount of games with 38, but he's only been on the field 370 minutes in each of his two seasons. So again, you look at these four picks, some haven't really lived up to anything yet, and some are doing okay, but all of these guys were picked over the $9 million DK. Now again, I know these players still 100% have the chance to do amazing things in their career. 
It's just funny to me that some players have it straight away like DK and others are just taking a little bit more time. Now we get into the big question that surrounds this draft. Is it still a viable option for finding talent? Well, yes, you do see the big names coming out of this system like DK and a few others we'll mention later, but maybe it's a bit outdated. These players coming through the draft are spending a majority of their upbringing by playing club and eventually going through NCAA college soccer, which is a whole nother style compared to the professional game. This means that we're seeing players coming out of the draft sometimes as old as 21 years old, which in the world of football is definitely an older age for a young player. When you look at some of the best young talents in Europe, you're seeing top level guys making their debuts for massive clubs in their teenage years. Antu Fati debuted for Barcelona at 16. Erling Haaland became a starter for Dortmund at 19. The fact is that players unlike Pepe who choose to go this route find themselves in the professional game later than some of the young talents around the world. The average age of these first five picks in the 2020 MLS Super Draft was 20.2 years old, and it takes those players a few years as well to get into the league. Before I move on to another draft class, there are still some other big players who were picked in this 2020 draft. Henry Kessler was the number six pick, and he's just played a really important role in the New England Revolution's record-setting season. Another name in here is Alistair Johnson, a Canadian national team starter who was drafted at number 11. He was just traded over to Montreal for $1 million in GAM, and he's valued at just under $3 million on the global market. Although it may not be as many as people would like, these super drafts are bringing in some real contributors to the league. Going into 2019's draft class, we start to see some of the guys who haven't seen the light of day yet on an MLS level. The third pick, Santiago Patino, is no longer in the league after being signed with Orlando City. The fourth pick from FC Dallas, Callum Montgomery, hasn't even made an MLS appearance, but we do get some huge picks later on with Chase Gasper, the strong midfielder who's played 62 games with Minnesota, and his midfield partner Hassani Dotson, who was drafted 31st overall and has appeared 71 times for the Loons. The biggest player coming from this 2019 class though is Tejan Buchanan, the right side of player who just recently made the move overseas to Club Bruges for $7 million. Again, that's a $7 million player that was drafted 9th overall. Not only did New England just get a big payday from this draft pick, but he also helped lead this team to the Supporter Shield last season. Now at this point in 2018, these players have had a few years to really show where their careers are shaping up at. And this is a pretty underwhelming year in the eyes of big names. Orlando City defender Jao Moutinho was the first pick by LAFC and he's been okay in Orlando, having 1200 minutes last season. The second pick in 2018 was Thomas Hillard Arce, who you've probably either never heard of like me or haven't heard his name since 2018. He actually retired from professional football at 24 at the end of the 2020 USL season. Like I said, there's not many big names from this year, but some standout ones that have been involved in some big interleague trades include Tristan Blackman, Mason Toy, and Brian White. In 2017, Miles Robinson was the second overall pick, and at 24 years old and a great year with the US men's national team, he has been rumored for a big move to Europe. We also have some great MLS guys like Jonathan Lewis, Jeremy Abobasi, and Jackson Ewell. Also, just to show how great players can be passed on, Jack Elliott, the center back for the Philadelphia Union, was drafted 77th overall in the fourth round of this Super Draft. What do you make of teams deciding, you know what, we're kind of done. We, you know, we traded these picks, we're done. We're, we're only a few picks into the second round. I think that's really dumb. This showcases another possible flaw that comes with this draft concept. In 2017, clubs began passing their draft picks in the 57th round. If a player like Elliott fell all the way to the 77th pick, and he has still managed to create a career in this league as one of the top center backs, just think how much talent has fallen through this system. Finally, we're going to end with the 2016 draft, where with the first pick, the Chicago Fire selected Jack Harrison and then traded him over to New York City FC. That's right, Jack Harrison, the Leeds United winger in the Premier League, was from the MLS draft and he was actually selected by Chicago before heading over to New York. He was then loaned to Leeds from Manchester City and has since signed permanently with the club, guiding them back to the Premier League 
and picking up 135 appearances. Also in this draft class, we see Richie Larea, another player who just recently was transferred to Europe, this time to Nottingham Forest for $1 million. So there you go. Those are some of the big names that can come from the MLS Super Draft. It only took Daryl DK one year, 11 months, and 24 days from the day he was putting on his first Orlando City scarf to the day he signed a $9 million deal to West Brom. We're possibly only days away from seeing the next star begin their journey. Are you ready? Are you ready?